Okay, uh, we'll get going today. Um, just to let everybody know that we are recording this webinar and it will be posted on the TETHAS website. Um, thanks everybody for joining today. Um, this is the 20th webinar hosted by REN. Um, this is a uh, webinar focused on the wind energy monitoring and mitigation technologies tool. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jonathan, can you go to the next slide, please? So, um, REN is a part of the International Energy Agency's Wind Technology Collaboration Program, and IEA Wind was initiated in 1977. There's 26 member countries participating in 16 tasks, and REN is designated as Task 34. And REN stands for Working Together to Resolve Environmental Effects of Wind Energy. REN began in October of 2012, um, and it's currently in its third phase. Um, we've gone through um, two um, uh, proposal processes to uh, get to this point. Um, <clears throat> and this phase will end in September of 2024. The purpose of REN is to support the deployment of both land-based and offshore wind energy through a better understanding of environmental issues, particularly those related to efficient monitoring programs and mitigation strategies. And the REN website is hosted on TETHIS, um, and there's uh, a link on the slide, and we can we can put that in the, in the chat as well. Um, 13 countries um, are a part of REN uh, at present. Um, the U.S. and Canada, and then several countries in Europe. Uh, next slide, please. So in this in the third phase of REN, we had three uh, main objectives. One is to identify international research priorities for land-based and offshore wind. We did this over the first <clears throat> two years, and um, our manuscript was recently accepted by Global Sustainability. We hope to have that out. Um, soon and we will uh, have that on, on TEVIS and, and send a notice on, on TEVIS Blast when that is available. Uh, we also aggregate and disseminate information on the global state of the science. We do these through webinars, um, research briefs, um, uh, IEA technical reports, and all these can be found on, on TEVIS. Lastly, um, in this phase, we work to identify and provide public access to existing and emerging um, technologies. And that's the focus uh, of today. Um, the partnership between REN um, or within REN, um, the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory and, and uh, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory worked with REN members and others to develop this tool to ensure the the global community has access to information on land-based and offshore wind monitoring and mitigation technologies, their state of development, and um, any publicly available research um, that highlights the validation or uh, effectiveness of these technologies. I do want to note that inclusion of the technologies in the tool does not indicate an endorsement by the U.S. Department of Energy, REN, or the National Laboratories. Um, we're just trying to find um, as many technologies that we can and disseminate that information so that people are aware of uh, the tools that are out there. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Jonathan at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory to walk you through the, the tool. Great. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so I want to begin uh, with a little bit of background information, um, and then we're actually going to just uh, flip over to um, web browser and just do a live demo of the tool. Uh, so to start, I wanted to kind of highlight some criteria for when we say technology, what do we mean, what's included in it. Um, at a high level, uh, technology, uh, we're looking at technology that's meant to monitor and mitigate wind interactions with offshore and land-based wind energy. Uh, we are not limiting to U.S. developed technology, so we are looking internationally. Uh, our, we are primarily looking at instrumentation and software, uh, but we are not including services like environmental consulting advice. Uh, 
Uh, we do include some technologies from analogous industries, as long as the monitoring function is similar. Uh, this includes uh, offshore oil and gas, marine energy, and several others. Hmm. I want to uh, quickly jump into a few uh, bits on terminology before we, uh, before we actually do the demo. Uh, these are some of the ways that we've categorized the technology, and I think it's important to kind of highlight up front what we what mean. It might give you an idea of what's included. Uh, earlier renditions of this tool uh, involved us assigning uh, technology readiness levels or TRLs to the technology, but that, that can be rather subjective, uh, especially when we're working on incomplete public information. So we instead chose to categorize based on this research status, uh, uh, based on publicly available validation literature. So within research status, a uh, laboratory implies that uh, there were bench or uh, lab-based studies uh, focused on the initial performance of the technology, uh, perhaps exploring the functionality or durability of the uh, instrument. Uh, a pilot field study is an early stage study for, uh, focused on the performance of the technology with uh, uh, an initial effectiveness relative to a species of interest. Uh, it may be performed at a wind farm or, or, in a, or it could be in a natural setting where the species of interest may be located. Uh, by a small scale field study, uh, we're look, it's a mid-stage study focused on either the performance of the technology, initial integration with the turbine or wind farm infrastructure, uh, and again, effectiveness relative to the species of interest. Um, this uh, should be at a wind farm, but it's often with a small sample size. And then with that large scale field study, it's looking at very much the same things as the small scale study, uh, but with the larger sample size, uh, it may be conducted at one or more wind farms, potentially looking at the difference uh, from one location to another. Uh, development status uh, is also assigned to technologies. Uh, we intend for this tool to be a catalog for existing available technologies, uh, while we also want it to be a historical repository for past technologies, uh, as there are a lot of valuable lessons to be learned from those, uh, those past uh, uh, tools or technologies. So commercially available implies it is available for purchase. Uh, it may be still undergoing further research and development at this point though, um, you know, making mo modifications and slight improvements. It could be open source available. Uh, that mostly pertains to software and it means that it's freely available for use. In development means that there uh, that it's not available for purchase at this moment. However, there may be opportunities to partner with this technology while they test and develop. Um, and the goal is that eventually they will be uh, commercialized and uh, commercially available. Uh, and then discontinued means that the development has ceased and no product is available. Uh, perhaps the company went out of business. Uh, with that, we're going to uh, jump over to the tool. Um, we'll post the link in chat, but I'm also going to show, how, show you how to get there from starting uh, just at Google. So, um, so first of all, if we jump over to tethys.pnnl.gov, uh, that will take you to the uh, Tethys website. And then if you look under tools, you'll now find the Wind Technologies tool um, listed right here. So we're going to go there. And here it is. Um, I uh, first of all want to highlight that there are currently um, 60 technologies listed in this tool. Um, our hope is that that number continues to grow over the years, uh, but we felt like it was a pretty good initial start, uh, all things considered. Uh, developers were asked for input on these entries, uh, and many submitted corrections or confirmed the text uh, that, we, that we developed for, for their tool or for their technology. Uh, there are some basic filters and keyword searching at the top. For example, I can, oops, looks like there might be a drawing on it. Um, anyway, uh, for example, I can search bats here and then go deterrent um, and you're gonna, it's gonna pull up four different uh, technologies that look at uh, passive acoustic deterrents for, um, for bats, uh, one of them, one of which was uh, actually created for both birds and bats. Um, you can hit reset, it'll go back to all the initial uh, 60 technologies. So you got some basic searching. I will also note that as you scroll down, kind of has a sticky header. So that header kind of stays along with you. Um, there are several uh, de design principles in play here. Uh, 
We wanted to provide a high level overview uh, of each technology while also providing information to learn more. So it's expected that a developer or researcher will look closely at the validation studies, which are over here under citations, and that they'll do kind of their own analysis before um, to assess the, its application uh, at a specific location. Uh, we also try to pack a lot of information into each row. Uh, so we do some combining of fields and I'll kind of uh, so I'll quickly walk through what fields we have available for each technology, and then uh, you can um, I'll kind of highlight whenever we've combined uh, fields. So with, within hierarchy, uh, this is mainly used to determine whether the technology is monitoring or mitigation. Uh, monitoring, as we've defined it, is methods and technologies used to observe ecosystem processes, habitat changes, behavior, activity, or abundance. Uh, and it's used to assess uh, potential environmental impacts resulting from a project. Meanwhile, mitigation is a means to avoid, minimize, or compensate the adverse effects of environmental impacts resulting from a project. Uh, depending on the regular uh, the regulatory authority, mitigation may also refer to measures that reduce, uh, rectify, rehabilitate, or offset impacts. So you have hierarchy uh, that gets its own column. Uh, we then have industry, and this specifies, uh, this is just this top section, you'll notice there's kind of a, a break. So industry is going to be whether it's land-based, offshore, or both. Uh, then getting to implementation phase, this is the stage at which the technology is designed to be used. Uh, so that could be planning, construction, operation, or decommissioning. So that's going to be listed kind of in that same column there. Uh, next, we have environmental stressors and receptors. So a stressor is a common term used throughout TFIS, but it identifies the physical or biological uh, external effect caused by the wind farm or the turbine or the wind farm. Meanwhile, a receptor is the orga organism, habitat, or ecosystem process that is affected by that stressor. So those two are kind of paired. You can see there's kind of a, a break between one and the next. Uh, we then list the technology. Uh, the developer is going to be listed in bold at the top, and then it's going to be uh, the, the name is going to be linked to where you can get, where you can find out more information or, um, you know, potentially purchase that that technology. So li link to the, uh, the, the technology developer's uh, um, website. We have a brief description. Our team does work to avoid any marketing language in that description. We're simply trying to describe what the technology does. Uh, and then we, uh, the next one is placement and integration, which is listing where uh, that technology is meant to be located on the turbine or wind farm. Then over here, we have uh, the last two columns to provide information about validation, validation studies related to the technology. Uh, some validation studies are comparing similar technologies, uh, while others are standalone uh, assessments, so kind of a combination of both. Uh, we provide a summary for each validation study, and then we link to the actual document on TFIS. Um, so you can click on the link here, and it's going to take you to um, a page on TFIS where you can get more information as a journal article, um, and it you know, because you can get the abstract, you can ac access the, the PDF itself right here. Um, and that, that goes to the validation study. Um, meanwhile, we've also kind of done our own little um, summaries of them. So for each of the, um, for each of the uh, validation studies, we basically go through and we kind of follow a basic template with each of these summaries. We're identifying the receptor, uh, the approach, the location, and the dates involved. And so we kind of have these very brief summaries. So you can get a, get an idea of what you're looking at and then kind of that maps over to the uh, citations over here. Um, uh, we are trying to make these kind of short and consistent. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that, that's hopefully lets you kind of delve in more into the technology. Finally, I want to point out that development status, as I mentioned before, um, it is a filter up here. We just don't have it shown in the text anywhere. Um, with that, there's also a couple of additional uh, kind of bells and whistles on the tool. So first of all, um, by clicking uh, right here, you can actually download a CSV file of the um, uh, of, of all the technologies. If you filter down, it should give you kind of a subset of whatever you filtered down to. And so that's a CSV file. It should have all, um, all the fields that are present. Um, it doesn't, it kind of 
uncombines the fields like what we've done here. So you can, uh, if you're trying to do additional analysis on, on, on kind of what technologies are available, um, that's a great way to kind of pull it offline and, and dig a little bit more deeper into all of that. Um, additionally, if you want to recommend a missing a new or a missing technology, uh, there is a survey uh, that we've set up. So if you click right here on this survey, uh, it brings up something in SurveyMonkey. It's a nice, neat form that kind of walks through um, all the different fields that we need. Um, and in a lot of places, it gives you that definition for what we mean by something. So, you know, it'll kind of help guide your selections. Um, we uh, uh, do ask for contact information up at the top. Uh, this information is not going to be shared, uh, but we do, uh, if it makes sense, we may have you be the point of contact for that technology because we do hope to kind of follow up with, uh, with each of these technologies, follow up with the developers and just verify that, hey, are there any new validation studies? Is the information still correct? Things of that nature. So we may still list you as the kind of point of contact just internally um, so that we can check back with you. Um, there is, we also do reserve the right to um, alter some of the text fields, specifically that description and those summaries. Uh, largely, we're go going to just be using this for doing that for consistency and also to remove any marketing language. We want this tool to be very straightforward and it doesn't do if you have multiple technologies, I'll say that they're the best at doing what they do, right? Um, so we're, we're just trying to state facts and people can, can look at the validation studies themselves to kind of see how well that that technology is performing. Um, so our team will continue to add and update entries. We plan to request updates from the community um, on Tethys Blast every six months or so. Um, and we do intend to request updates from developers on an annual basis. Um, that more or less concludes the tool um, or the, uh, the demo everything that I had. Uh, we will have some time for Q&A at the end, and so you're welcome to um, ask more questions or ask about uh, jumping into uh, some of the uh, specific, uh, if you want to see anything specific, let us know. Um, I will flip it back over to Chris to conclude. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, <clears throat> There were a lot of people that worked on this, including um, REN members, um, but I want to acknowledge um, several folks from the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, including Jonathan, Haley Farr, and, and uh, Zara Miles at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, Sam Rooney, Emika Brown, Laura Dempsey, and Karen Sinclair, and then support from the Department of Energy, Wind Energy Technologies Office, um, Jim Algram, Jocelyn Brown, Saracino, Joy Page, Raphael Tisch, and Naomi Lewandowski all provided insight and expertise in developing the tool and what to include in the tool. And it was, it was a nice collaborative effort among these people and um, members of REN. Um, so with that, um, happy to take uh, any questions um, from you all. Um, with time remaining, we've got about 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, uh, either put them in the chat or um, raise your hand and, and uh, happy to answer anything you have. Um, one thing to, to mention, um, there is a, a link um, on the tool for definitions. Um, uh, so what does a stressor mean? What are the stressors? Um, um, Jonathan went through like monitoring and mitigation and, and things like that. So um, if you have any, you know, if you're going through this and wondering what it means for um uh phase or or anything like that um laboratory was a laboratory study was a pilot field study um those are those are all there uh 
Um, okay. Um, well, um, if no questions, we we can end the webinar. Um, and and hope you enjoy the tool. As Jonathan mentioned, we're we're trying to you know add to this so that there's a good comprehensive list of technologies that are being used worldwide. Um, and so, if you know of any, please um, fill out the survey. I, I did see a, a question come in. Okay, super. Oh yeah, here they're coming. <laughs> All right. So, uh, one question is: This tool uh, does it have real time update of data? Um, so we um, we will be continually continually looking for new publications for existing tools that are in here and can update those um, as we come across them. Every six months, we will um, uh, do a just a call for technologies through the TSS Blast and can upload new technologies. Um, twice a year and then if there's any corrections or anything we need to fix within the tool um we can do that but um it won't be uh real time it'll be different periods of the year that we we do these updates yeah just because there's a there's a process involved with doing that import and so um uh, yeah we're just for, for our sanity, where we're doing it. And if there's a lot of updates, we can do it more frequently than, than six months, but that's kind of what we're targeting right now. Uh, next question, do you have any results from groups implementing tool technologies? Um, I, if I'm interpreting this right, I think that's what the, the citations um, are for, are the kind of the results of validation studies or just uh, experimental studies in some cases um, for each of these technologies. And uh, the way that we've designed this is we're leaving it up to the reviewer, um, those who are using the tool to kind of assess uh, for themselves whether um, this tool meets their needs. Um, so those results are in the citations. Yeah. I hope that uh, answered your question. Kind of good. Uh, next question, does BOEM have this tool? Um, this tools, this specific tool is available for anyone. Um, it's it's publicly available on the TTS website. And I would also note, um, it, BOEM had a somewhat similar tool, um, although they were looking at more like monitor, you know, mitigation strategies um, offshore. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of doing something different than that if you're referring to the previous tool that, that Boehm had, mm -hmm. so. Um, all right, um, another question uh, from the standpoint, and this is totally hypothetical, but what if developers have a mitigation strategy they like, but regulatory agencies do not agree, then that technology runs the risk of not being accepted as acceptable in the field? Um, can you repeat that one? Sorry. Yeah, basically, what if um, developers have a mitigation strategy they like, but mitigation or regulatory agencies do not agree, then that technology runs the risk of not being accepted as applicable in the field. Y yeah, I, I mean, that's one that's outside the scope of this technology tool. Um, we're not evaluating or making any value statements on, on any of these technologies. Um, that's a, a broader discussion between uh, the regulators and industry and the scientific community. Yeah, and I would also note that we are also looking internationally. So if one uh, regulatory agency, you know, chooses not to use something, well, we're kind of not being pigeonholed into just views for a specific country, we're kind of covering everything. So, um, yeah, we're we're really not excluding things based on based on that. That's why we say it's kind of up to the application to look at the technology and look at the validation studies and kind of assess whether it's feasible. Uh, next question: Do you have any reports of how well these technologies are performing in the field once they are more widely available? Um, 
again, I, I think that's in the citations. Um, we we tried to find the relevant publicly available reports, publications um, for the performance of these technologies. Sometimes they're conducted during an, an experimental study, depending on the phase of the technology. In other cases, they're technologies that um, may be commercially available and are reporting out on their performance. So um, that kind of depends on um, where the stage of, of development the technology is in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so depending on your application, I would definitely start with like um, that research status, you know, if they if you're looking for something for you know a large scale wind farm, you know, look for a large scale, something that has been validated at a large scale field study. But then don't just stop there. You know, you have to look at the look at the reports, make sure that that you know detections are within the range that you, that's acceptable that you're looking for. Uh, you, you kind of look into it. But these are reports that are not just using the technology; they're ones that are actually assessing how well the technologies are are being done. And our hope is that. Um, this also kind of puts some pressure on technology developers to do these validation studies um, or third parties to do these validation studies and to make them publicly available. Um, because, you know, if, if there's a tool here that has, you know, great documentation on, on, the, on the validation that's been done for it, um, it's going to be viewed maybe as more trustworthy. You know, again, it's still up to the interpretation of whoever's using it. but. Um, there's going to be more information for them to dive into. So if you see like six citations next to something, then well, it's been it's been used a lot, it's been looked at a lot. You know, um, kind of makes it look better. So you know, do your validation tests and publish them. If you're a technology developer, it'll it'll look better. All right. Okay. Um, well, thanks again for your time today. Um, and uh, Haley just posted on the chat that if you have any questions, um, you can, or feedback, you can submit those to tethus at pnnl.gov. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.